Crucial MK4 or XL's extruder hot end comprises of four parts the extruder heater block, heater cable, thermistor, and the nozzle. Heater block heats your nozzle, providing the melting temperature for your filament. Heater cable heats the heater block, and thermistor is just a fancy word for basically thermostat. It constantly monitors heater block's temperature and instructs the heater cable to turn on or off upon the demand. Before we start looking into nozzles, let's discuss silicon sock. If you have a leak and silicon sock is on, it will be harder for you to notice the leak. Otherwise, it's uh, cheap and it's great addition to your heater block because it will prevent filament from sticking. When it comes to nozzles, you have two options. Either you're using the extruder V6 nozzle adapter and then you can use any V6 nozzle or you can use Prusa nozzle. That is novelty in MK4 and XL. In theory, V6 nozzle adapter is amazing. You can buy any V6 nozzles and then they're cheaper than Prusa nozzles. They have hardened steel options like Nozzle X, you know, they have regular brass options. So basically, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, this is a great option. In fact, it's the same company that manufactures an extruder V6 nozzle adapter and Prusa nozzle. An alternative for V6 nozzle adapter is Prusa nozzle. If you order a new MK4 or XL, it will come with Prusa nozzles. With this thing, it is impossible to have leaks, but some users say that if the filament gets stuck inside, it's hard to get it out. I clogged my Prusa nozzle brass twice, but lucky for me, I unclogged it. It is a tedious process, but it can be done. Then I got an extruder V6 nozzle adapter and I got two nozzle X's, one 0.4 and one 0.6, and then I started from 0.6. I used it for about maybe a couple of weeks and I decided to change to 0.4 because for what I was working on, the 0.6 nozzle was too big. And then I noticed I have a leak and I don't know if the leak was because I installed the 0.4 nozzle wrong or maybe because, you know, the heater block was already worn out a little bit. Maybe the thread got looser or maybe it's because of vibrations or whatever the reason it is. But, you know, leak is leak and I thought, let's fix it. Yeah, it was uh, wishful thinking because V6 nozzle adapter thread was full of filament nozzle x was also full of filament so basically ruined so not only that the heater block thread was also full of filament and i couldn't even use push a nozzle because the thread wouldn't even go in thermistor was lost for the same reason from this accident i only managed to salvage heater cable so if you have a leak just let it go and admit to yourself that it failed and don't even try to disassemble and salvage it because you're just gonna lose everything most importantly you're gonna lose time so it's important to have a spare hot end okay lessons learned also i don't think i'm ever going to use v6 nozzle adapter at Prusa's website hot ends usually are out of stock so you have to order components separately this time, I decided to go with the obsidian for my nozzle. The good thing is that it's really easy to assemble a new hot end, even for somebody who's just starting with 3D printing. The tip of the heating cable should align with the bottom of the heating cable, and I found that for that, it's easiest to use some sort of flat card, or you could even use a tabletop, and then just screw these two little bolts then thermistor sensor all the way in and we secure it with one bolt. Then it's time for the nozzle and silicon sock. First nozzle, so I'm using uh, just a regular wrench. And for this purpose, I bought a torque screwdriver so that this time I do everything properly. First tighten it with hand, then screwdriver until we reach the required torque. And then finally, we install the silicon sock. All looking good, nice and tight. I actually wish I have started from all this and avoided the V6 nozzle adapter. Just looks cool. In comparison to look all this mess.
If there is a better way to clean the nozzle adapter than just heating it up and using brass brush, please let me know in the comments. Before push a nozzle existed, these were probably the only way to go, but thanks God, not anymore. Now let's install this bad boy and get printing. Don't forget to turn the silicon sock option on. Then I printed test cube and results did not disappoint me. Of course, I see some seams, but that's a slicer issue. Otherwise, all good. I used this hot end for 170 print hours at this moment and I didn't experience any issues except that it got loose, most likely from vibrations, but otherwise the threads look really clean, the hot end is just like new. And silicon sock really did magic, look you can tell where it covered the nozzle and where it didn't. I wish I knew all this before but that's why I'm making this video so maybe it'll save somebody else. When you combine price of all the parts for both options, it just really makes no sense to go with the Nextruder V6 nozzle adapter.